Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeff Wade. I'm the team lead for the community outreach and the natural resource industries at Esri here in Redlands, California. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar organized in concert with the mining user group entitled Transforming Your Environmental Workflows with Mobile Apps and the Operations Dashboard. This webinar is being recorded and will be posted in the next few days. As a participant, you'll receive a follow-up email with a link to that recording, which I'll provide later. I'm confident that many of you will have attended Esri GoToWebinars in the past, and today we'll follow our normal practice of encouraging you to enter questions as we go along in the GoToWebinar questions dialog box during the presentation. We'll answer as many of these questions as time permits towards the end of the session, or subsequently if we run out of time. And I'd like to remind everyone that this webinar is being developed, was been developed in concert with the Esri Mining User Group, who helped and guided, uh, whose help and guidance is, is indispensable. The purpose of the, of the MUG is to gather business needs from the mining community and work with Esri to drive the appropriate technology development. The MUG has been in existence for 11 years with over 2,000 members. And the MUG uses LinkedIn, a LinkedIn site for most communications. Once completed, this webinar will be added to an online library of resources available for everyone in the group. As you're probably surmised by now, I'll be your MC for the webinar. So now let's go ahead and introduce a couple of the other guests that you'll be hearing from today. So I'm the guy on the left hand side, uh, Community Outreach Manager for Esri speaking from my office in Redlands, California, Esri's HQ. I'm joined by my Esri colleague, Matt Ballard, Solutions Engineer on uh, the Esri Natural Resources team. He'll be speaking to us from his office in San Antonio, Texas. Next, uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce Nina Astillero and Adam Offert from Freeport McMoran. Nina's an environmental engineer, normally based in New Mexico, but happens to be in the Netherlands this week. And Adam is an environmental scientist and is at the Freeport McMoran Tyrone mine site today in New Mexico. Okay, with introductions complete, let's just quickly get you oriented to today's agenda. The material we'll cover was born from questions raised by the mining user group about the practical application of ArcGIS mobile apps and, an operate, and the operations dashboard to mine operations workflows. With the help of our friends from Freeport McMoran, we hope to do justice to that question today, care of the following four steps. First, we'll do an overview of how the ArcGIS platform can support field operations. Next, we'll discuss some of those practical implementations at the Freeport, Freeport McMoran Tyrone mine in New Mexico and then we'll do a technical update on the new, some new developments on the horizon for these various apps and finish with a Q&A. So now I'd like to go, hand, go ahead and hand it over to my Esri colleague, Matt Ballard, for an overview of how the ArcGIS platform can support field operations. Matt? All right, thanks, Jeff. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And what I'm going to be going through is just a really uh, a high level overview of what capabilities are available within the ArcGIS platform for field operations. Now, to start it off, though, I want to give a, a quick mission statement about where we see field operations as a capability of the ArcGIS platform. Really, uh, across all the oil, uh, across all the mining companies that we work with. The goal with uh, enabling uh, our applications for field operations is really to digitalize mobile workflows and embed location intelligence in them. So by that, I mean embedding geospatial information and giving geospatial context to these mobile workflows. And the ultimate goal, right, is to complete work faster and more efficiently and ultimately bring a better return on your investment in our technology. 
And so across all the different companies that we work with, our applications fit into these sort of six tenets that I'm about to walk through. Starting off, field operations is really all starts with your ArcGIS platform, right? All of the different geospatial information that you manage in your organization, such as uh, all your environmental boundaries or parcels or uh, where your water wells are located, whatever asset information it is, it all really starts with ArcGIS. And we can use that information then to plan, right? Whenever you're planning your field operations, you need to understand location information so that you can assign and coordinate field activities. And so that brings us into the second tenet of field operations in the ArcGIS platform, which is coordinating. So being able to act on both real-time conditions as well as the information that you're managing with ArcGIS to ultimately coordinate workers in the field and tell them what work it is that needs to get that needs to get done. Thirdly, oftentimes users need to navigate. You might think about navigating on things like uh, you know uh, commercial road networks, things like that, but it's also sometimes more internal. So roads that are on your facilities or roads that are in rural areas that haven't been mapped before giving everybody in your organization the ability to get to where work needs to get done. Once they're there, people oftentimes need to understand. So this goes back to that, uh, that geospatial context that's so important. Being able to open up a map and have all of the different information available to, your, available to you at your fingertips. And when you're there, what we see is everybody ultimately needs to collect information. So whether you're collecting the boundary of, uh, of a certain asset, or if you're collecting an inspection on a well, you need to capture some form of information. And with that information, you ultimately bring it back into the office where whoever it is that's uh, a dispatcher or a manager or uh, uh, somebody who works in the mine operations, they ultimately need to be able to see what information has been collected and see the progress of work in real time. And that information that's gathered then can be used to plan and coordinate further. So it's a cycle where information collected in the field drives business decisions back in the office to conduct more work. In the ArcGIS platform, we've got applications that fit into each of these categories. Things like Workforce for ArcGIS for managing a mobile workforce or Explorer for understanding where if, where your assets are out in the field to a couple new ones, which you'll be seeing today in a later demonstration. Now, for the first demonstration though, uh, we brought Adam and Nina from Freeport Mac brand, who are gonna talk about how they've leveraged some of these applications that I just showed you in a very similar workflow uh, to what I just talked about, how they've applied it to an environmental workflow uh, in specific. So with that, uh, I'll pass it over to Adam and Nina to, to give a brief overview of Freeport and then talk about how they're leveraging these apps. Great, thank you, Matt. So firstly, you may be wondering, who is Freeport Macron? Well, Freeport is a leading international mining company with headquarters in Phoenix, Arizona. Our company was incorporated under the laws of the state of Delaware on November 10, 1987. We operate large, long-lived, geographically diverse assets with significant proven and probable reserves of copper, gold, and molybdenum. Our portfolio of assets includes the Grassberg Minerals District in Indonesia, one of the world's largest copper and gold deposits, and significant mining operations in the Americas including the large-scale Morenci Minerals District in North America and the Cerro Verde operation in South America. Okay, greetings everyone. Uh, again, my name is Adam Offit. I'm an environmental scientist at Freeport McMoran. I am primarily responsible for oversight of various groundwater discharge permits. I manage the site's potable water system. I participate as a member of the company's drinking water SME team. The Tyrone mine where I'm stationed is a large and complex site covering an area of about 9,000 acres. The site consists of eight operational discharge permit areas, about 800 groundwater monitor and extraction wells, multiple leach and waste stockpiles, 
reclaimed tailings dam, and several open pits. As part of our environmental management system and to meet our compliance obligations, we have extensive monitoring and inspection programs that we undertake. As a result, we generate a significant amount of geospatial data that has to be analyzed and tracked. And again, my name is Nina. I'm an environmental engineer along with Adam at the Tyrone Mine, but currently in the Netherlands supporting another operation. When I'm at Tyrone, I oversee the site's stormwater, air quality, asbestos, and SPCC programs. I also am involved in several corporate initiatives for auditing, software implementation, and leadership. With over nine years of experience in environmental compliance and best management practices for Freeport at downstream production facilities, mines, and with several external companies. So you, you may be wondering, why are we interested in the Esri apps? Well, the Esri apps uh, have allowed us to work collaboratively to apply innovative technological solutions to optimize our environmental workflows. Uh, it allows us to see in real time our data about the respective compliance programs we have. Uh, we're, we're better enabled to make decisions about said data. And then we can analyze and visualize data in a geospatial format. So over the years, uh... Esri software has evolved, it's, and it's become increasingly easy to use. Nina and I started developing apps like the ones that we'll demonstrate for you today just a little over a year ago. Uh, the technology is so intuitive that we were able to pick it up quickly with just a little help from our corporate GIS team and through the use of Esri's online training resources. To date, we've developed a collection of over 20 electronic surveys, web maps, dashboards, and story maps. We use Collector and Survey123 heavily to collect inspection data associated with all of our various media, including groundwater, surface water, drinking water, air quality, waste, and recycling. We also use these apps to collect operational data associated with pumps, meter readings, and asset inventory. We've developed dashboards and web maps to share and view our inspection data in real time. We've also reduced our ma uh, document management burden significantly as the data we collect is automatically stored in the cloud. We use the reporting functionality to fulfill compliance record keeping requirements, and we're using story maps to train new personnel on environmental compliance. Today, Nina and I are going to demonstrate a workflow using various ESRI apps, including Workforce for ArcGIS, Survey123, and Operations Dashboard. And you may find it interesting to know that this is a live demonstration, and she and I are currently an ocean apart. The workflow that we'll demonstrate uh, will go like this. I will use Workforce for ArcGIS to create an assignment for Nina to sample a monitor well. The assignment will be sent to her mobile device, prompting her to sample the well and providing her with all the relevant information, including the well's location. Nina will use a Survey123 form to collect water quality data as she samples the well. I will be able to see the status of the assignment as she acknowledges it, begins it, and completes it. Then we'll use Operations Dashboard to view the data. So, what you're seeing on my screen now is a workforce project. Workforce is a powerful tool for managing projects, dispatching assignments, and tracking progress. The map you see is a customized web map showing wells at the site. <clears throat> on the left-hand pane, you see a list of assignments that have been created. It shows the assignment type, the status, and who it was assigned to. At the top, you can see several filtering options that can be used to narrow the list of assignments based on your interest. If I select the Workers tab here at the bottom, I can see which workers are logged into Workforce and what their current workloads are. And it's also interesting to note that if I hover my mouse over a worker, the map pops up and displays the worker's location. If I wanted to quickly see where a worker's at, I can click on their name. So I'll select Nina. 
And you see workforce updated, and it's showing me that Nina is sitting somewhere in the Netherlands right now. I'll go back to the Tyrone site. So to get started, I'm going to select a monitor well on the map that I'll need Nina to sample. You can see that workforce recognizes the well identifier. This is well number 34. It also displays some relevant attributes associated with the well. Here at the bottom, I'll select Create Assignment. <clears throat> and notice that on the left-hand side, the Create Assignment pane is displayed. Under Assignment Types, I have a drop-down menu with various different uh, types of assignments. These are highly customizable. You can set them up to meet whatever your needs are. For example, I have a, an assignment to conduct an audit, another one to conduct an environmental inspection. And for today's purposes, I'll sample a monitor well. Again, note that Workforce has pre-populated the location with the well identifier. Next, I can choose who to assign the task to. I can select anyone from my crew. In this case, I'll go ahead and assign the task to Nina. I can specif specify a priority, a due date, and even a time. This ID field here is an op gives you an opportunity to put in a unique ID number. So if you want to create some synergy with a work order system, you could just as easily pop in a work order identification number here. Additionally, I can add a description. If there's something I need Nina to know about while she's in the field sampling the well, I can relay that information to her through this description box. I can also add attachments such as an SOP or any other information that she need, may need to review. I'll go ahead and select Create Assignment, and Nina will be receiving it on her end. Note that this indicator is showing that this assignment has been assigned, but the gray circle with the little bit of gray fill, uh, fill in the center indicates that she has not yet acknowledged receipt of the assignment. Now I'll go ahead and turn it over to her to complete the assignment using Survey123. Okay, so now I've received the assignment and I'm able to open up my survey from the workforce uh, assignment. So for us, we need to say what discharge plan number we're working in. So I select one of these numbers first. And then you can see the next options are site number and sample ID. You can see these are text boxes, so you can enter any type of information that you need. And you can um, suggest how many characters are needed. Then the sample collection date is auto-populated because the survey was open today. However, you can change the date if you needed to. Next, we have sampler name, and that's actually a drop-down menu. And so we're picking my name today. Uh, our next set of questions is about sample media. So today we have to sample groundwater, but another day we may have to do surface water or soil. So there's, of course, many different options here for us to choose from. Next, we have to choose our sample type. So today is a routine day, but other days we could do a split, duplicate, or other. For our workflow, we need to acknowledge what type of analysis suite for the lab, and so we can write that information here. Next is well data. So many of us that sample groundwater have to know well data depth, depth to water, water co column, but then you have to do some calculations, uh, maybe casing area or volume of water in well. And so this is where the calculator comes in handy. You can embed the calculator into the survey you created, and you can utilize the answer it gives you to, uh, to answer casing area or any of those other calcul field calculations you need to do. So you can see we have quite a few of them and anybody sampling groundwater is familiar with that. You could answer a, a comment or enter a comment if you need to. And then we have field measurements. So we need to take a minimum <laughs> of three readings. And so you can see we would have to enter the time 
and pH, conductivity, temperature, flow rate, and purge volume. So again, these are text boxes, but you could put different options in here if you'd like, such as the radio buttons you see below. <clears throat> so now we're on to equipment data, and we like to know which kind of uh, water level meter we're using, conductivity meter, pH meter, and so on and so forth. So we have the options here for our technicians to click on, and then we have to calibrate our meters. So we also have a space to put what the standards were when we did the calibration. Looks like we're doing pretty good today. Next, if you're at a site and you need to take a photo of something that doesn't look quite right or you have a question on, you can use the camera function there. And so that will open the camera on your mobile device. Or if you have a picture already saved to your device, you can click that folder and just upload it from your device. Next, we have another comments box. So if there's any other additional information you need to uh, enter, but you didn't have the space above, you can put it there. Lastly, we need to include sampler titles and a signature. So this is a place where you can actually write into the box and it saves to your survey as a JPEG. So you can uh, access it later. So now I'm complete with the survey and I would go back to workforce and I would click on the option to uh, say that I've completed the assignment and then Adam back in the office can see that work and take it from here. Okay, thank you. Um, had you been seeing my screen as she was completing the assignment, the indicators would have updated. Um, I could actually see when the assignment is in progress and when it's completed. I'm gonna switch over to Operations Dashboard now. Operations Dashboard is a useful tool for displaying your data in meaningful ways so you can make informed decisions at a glance. The current dashboard is displaying information about my team's assignments and workloads, as well as water quality information. Dashboards are easily customizable, so you could set one up to display the information that matters to you. <clears throat> there are several options for how to display the data. You can have line charts, bar charts, pie charts, multiple maps, indicators, and lists. In addition, you can have filters as a way to sort through your data. So in this dashboard, the pie chart on the left is set up so I can quickly see the overall status of assignments for my team. On the bottom, I have a bar chart that displays assignments by type and status. The map is showing uh, locations of assignments and the symbology reflects the assignment status as well. On the right hand pane, I have two lists that I've set up to give a little bit more information about the assignments. Again, these are customizable so you can display the information that's relevant to you. And at the top, I have some numerical indicators that show exactly how many assignments have been completed, how many are incomplete, and of the incomplete ones, <clears throat> how many of each assignment type there are. Using on the filters on the left-hand pane, I can easily view the data in different ways. I can see the workload for individual workers on my team. So I'll go ahead and sort the data to see what work Nina's got currently assigned. Note that everything updates, the map, the, the bar chart, and the list on the right-hand side. I can even sort assignments by a date range. This dynamic ability helps us to analyze the data and makes it much easier to prioritize and assign work. Now I'll go ahead and switch my active map to one that displays wells on our site. The list, uh, I'm going to change the list to one that's displaying well construction information. Currently, this list is displaying well construction information for all wells on site, but I will be able to filter that as well. And I'll change the chart at the bottom to a chart displaying water quality data. This is dummy data that's been put in for purposes of this demonstration. 
So as you can imagine, with a, nearly a thousand wells on site, it might be really difficult to locate an individual well. Tyrone's wells are associated with the various discharge permits. So I have a filter that will enable me to zero in on wells within a given discharge permit area. So I will go ahead and select our discharge permit area 166. The map has updated and now it's only displaying wells that fall within discharge permit 166. In addition, the list of well construction information is only reflecting that subset of wells as well. Now I have a well selector that is also pre-populated, only showing wells associated with DP-166. So I'm going to go ahead and drill down onto a particular well. We'll select go 166-2006-02. The map is updated, and it's showing me where that particular well is at. I can see how that well is constructed, and I can see water quality information in the chart at the bottom. Again, these charts can be organized as you see fit to display data in ways that are meaningful to you. I can also turn, um, turn different constituent concentrations on and off by selecting on the legend. So I'll go ahead and turn off cobalt, and now we're only displaying copper concentrations. In addition, I could filter my data by a date range. So that concludes this presentation. I'll go ahead and turn it back over to Matt. All right, thanks, Adam. That was that was really great. Thanks for sharing that with everybody. Let me uh, share my screen again. We can go back over to there. So if we look again and and think about what Adam and, and Nina showed us, they really followed very similar workflow to what we're showing here, right? They used Workforce for ArcGIS to coordinate using that geospatial information that they manage through the GIS team. Things like they're seeing those different dis discharge permit areas, all, of course, all of the different groundwater monitoring wells, and all of that historical data as well, all being used to ultimately coordinate work in the field. People in the field were capturing with Survey 123, and they were leveraging Operations Dashboard to provide a high-level overview of everything that was happening for their uh, groundwater operations. Now, again, uh, what we want to look at now is a couple of new applications that fit into this. So, one, two of them that I'm going to show are Quick Capture. So, Quick Capture is a tool for capturing information very quickly in the field. And then secondly, I'm going to show you Tracker. Tracker for ArcGIS is a tool that is designed to capture uh, location information using a mobile app and report it back to the office every couple of seconds. And so to show you those, I'm going to uh, exit out of here and jump over into my web browser. So what we're looking at right now is called the Track Viewer. When you deploy Track for ArcGIS, this is a web application that allows you to interact with all of the different information that's being collected. And in a second, I'll show you how we collect that on the device. First, though, what I see right now is my location. So it says, hey, this is Matt Ballard, his phone battery, accuracy, speed, information like that. What I can do on the left side is start to query different categories, like I might query different workers who are on my team to see where they currently are located or where they've been recently. I might also query something like, where has Matt been for the past 24 hours? And now what I get is a line that tells me where I've been going. I can click on that, see my current, my speed at that time, what time that was, and where I was headed by following along my path. Other ways that you could filter and query this data would be through accuracy, speed, or the activity type. So we're capturing all this information from the mobile device. And to show you how we're capturing that, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up my phone. Here you see the full suite of applications that fits into that beginning to end workflow that we saw, um, uh, the beginning to end workflow that we saw in those PowerPoint slides. The application I'll open up is, again, Tracker for ArcGIS, where you'll see just how simple this application is. So in here, what I see first is my current location. 
I see a base map. And what I can do at the bottom is hit track my location. All I have to do is turn that that little uh, button there on the bottom and it immediately starts capturing my location. I can also at the top left query, for example, the last 48 hours to see where I've been. I'll see that same line that we saw within the web application. And then the other thing that I might do is we take data privacy very seriously and we don't want everybody to be constantly being tracked. So we give you the ability to turn a schedule on where in my case, I've set a schedule for Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., ensuring that I'm not getting captured while I'm not at work and I can uh, keep my data private. So what Tracker ultimately puts the data into is just a feature service. So this is a web application, right? This Track Viewer is where we're able to look at different visualizations and query that feature service to to see where different employees have been. You could also just take that data and put it into a dashboard. So here's a, an operations dashboard where we're looking at employee locations again, building charts such, such as their activity type, average and maximum speeds. And I can go ahead and zoom into a, a, a specific worker. So say I wanted to go look at my current location, see who's near me, I'm of course uh, seeing all of these enormous amounts of tracks and so it can be quite uh, difficult to really glean any insight from all this data. So I might do something like filter it down just to look at myself. But even there, it's difficult to make an understanding of that data. So let's take this into ArcGIS Pro and look at a couple of examples in the mining industry where we've seen customers wanting to leverage these tools. So I opened ArcGIS Pro the first thing I'm going to do is turn on these tracker tracks. So here we're looking at a quarry, and in a given day, we've got all of these different tracks. We see some people in the quarry, some people around the perimeter of it, as well as some people driving to and from different sites that we're delivering materials to. With all these points, the first thing I might want to do is run some analysis to reconstruct tracks. Here, when I do that, what I'm able to see is a line that shows me in blue arrows where and which directions people are going. I can filter this down to look at specific employees, such as if I wanted to turn on this person who is doing a perimeter survey. In this case, using Tracker, they can see where they've walked and when they've walked the perimeter, ensuring things like the fences are, uh, are not broken, for example, and being able to ensure that the facility is uh, safely secured. Or I might look at something like this person who's conducting water samples. If I zoom in, we see three different bodies of water where they are conducting water samples. We can see where they stopped along those and where they collected those samples. Or let's look at this person who, uh, it looks like they were leaving the office, going to a, a location where they uh, did some drill holes. And in this case, in red, we observed their speed where they went beyond a certain speed threshold. So, you know, we looked at uh, perimeter survey, people who are conducting water samples, in this, in this case, this driller who maybe went above a certain speed threshold. So a couple of different ways that we're really uh, keeping, uh, you know, a close eye on operations and being able to see what is happening at any given moment and what has occurred, what's the history of work that's occurred over any given time frame, whether it's happened today or what's happened a week ago. And the last one that we might look at is the logistics case. If you remember some of those lines, they actually were going to those delivery locations. So here, again, that quarry is in the center. We've got two project sites and we're able to see where delivery uh, vehicles and haul trucks are currently located on their optimal routes. So these lines, white lines represent the optimal route to, to get to the project sites and we can see their current locations and we can see where there possibly is congestion and we can see those locations updating as we get most information in from the field. So we can see this truck moving along its route and we can see which ones are idle and do an analysis on that. Maybe certain routes are too uh, saturated with vehicles and we can use this to optimize our logistics operations. But that's Tracker for ArcGIS. 
it's a, uh, an application that at a high level just allows you to capture the most recent locations of your employees using a simple mobile application. The other application that I mentioned that I was going to talk about was Quick Capture. So to show Quick Capture again, I'm going to go over to my mobile device and open that up. What we saw earlier in Adam's presentation was they used Survey123 to capture information about groundwater well sampling. Survey123 is an excellent application for, for that type of a workflow. But what we also heard from a lot of our customers is that Survey123 was maybe taking too, too long for certain people to be able to fill out information. Let's say that we're just, uh, maybe we're driving a haul truck and we just need to be able to really quickly point my phone, click one button and capture some information. Or maybe we're doing that perimeter survey and we don't want to necessarily drop a point and fill out all these different fields. Instead, we really, again, just want to capture a location and a picture. So that's where we built Quick Capture. It's for rapid data collection. And so here's just a couple of examples where we've seen people in the mining industry interested in this. So in our operations at that quarry, we might be interested in marking observations of wildlife, things like invasive species, hazardous wildlife, or endangered species. To capture an observation of something like kudzu or uh, a dangerous uh, wildlife, I'll, all I would have to do is click one of these large squares. It would take a picture automatically, and it would send that back into a feature service where I could use that to drive operations dashboards to maybe go respond to an invasive species and spray it with uh, pesticide or go mark somewhere where hazardous wildlife has been repeatedly observed so that we can ensure that our employees are operating safely. Another example is this concept of see something, say something. For people who are uh, operating a mine site, safety is the number one concern. Being able to click on this and very quickly make observations such as erosion, potential rock fall, missing or broken safety equipment, or even something like a broken gate, lock, or road hazard. Whatever it is that you need to be able to report, if I wanted to make an observation, all I have to do is click broken safety sign, take a picture, and it'll send it back into the office. So this is really all about simple, basic, rapid data collection. You could give this, for example, to everybody uh, who's operating at your quarry or your mine site, so that way everybody's crowdsourcing this information and you're ensuring that anything that goes wrong, any kind of hazards, any kind of issues are getting addressed as quickly as possible. And so if we think back earlier to Freeport's presentation, they had a dispatcher back in the office who's using workforce to then assign work. So what we might do is leverage those quick capture observations to then drive work order assignments in workforce. So I'm back in my web browser. I'm in the dispatcher view right now of, uh, of Workforce for ArcGIS. And what we're looking at right now is that quarry that we were looking at in, the, in ArcGIS Pro. We've got those same boundaries and we can see a couple of different work order assignments such as fixing gates, erosion control. But what we also see is this replace broken safety sign. So if I click on this, this is something that was reported with Quick Capture. As soon as I make a submission on Quick Capture, a new work order is created in Workforce where I can then come in here and figure out what it is. So if they said a hazard material sign needs to be replaced. I can look at a picture of it if I wanted to. That was again the picture taken on Quick Capture. And then I can assign it to somebody to go out there and repair. So Traditionally, people think about looking at data, being a dispatcher, creating work orders from the office, but this enables everybody in your organization to report something, see something, say something, and then create a work order from it from the field. So with that, quick introduction to Tracker and Quick Capture. I'll wrap it up with some other enhancements that are coming down the pipeline with our field, op field operations apps. If we look at Workforce for ArcGIS, high level overview, again, this is all about planning and coordinating field work. In the near future, we'll be releasing enhanced support for offline workflows, 
completely revamping the user interface and adding the ability for you to display tracks from Tracker in Workforce. So within Workforce, I might need to know where I've been walking for the, for the past day. Uh, so that way I can see, you know, uh, again, where I've been, what work has been completed, and I can use that to inform maybe where I need to go next within my day. We'll also be adding capabilities for more advanced workforce management tools, like being able to pick up work from the field if it hasn't already been assigned in the office, and sequencing. So I need to go visit this well, that well, and then another well in a specific order, and maybe it's optimized back in the office. We'll, able to, we'll be able to do that sequencing then in workforce. Explore for ArcGIS is all about simple maps at your fingertips, being able to easily find assets and see where you are in relation to your uh, all of your geospatial data. In the near future, we're releasing updates for both Windows 10, iOS, and Android, and adding capabilities for things like offline areas, displaying tracks from Tracker again, which is very similar to what we saw just with Workforce a second ago, and the ability for uh, layers to have a refresh interval. So maybe you're updating information in real time. You'll be able to have those update now in Explore instead of having to refresh the map. Collector is without a doubt one of the most commonly used applications within, uh, within the mining industry. And it's all about collecting high accuracy information, always enabling it to be offline and being able to uh, collect everything from points, lines to polygons, as well as related records. The biggest thing that's new is this parody of the new version of Collector. So if, you're, if you've used Collector before, you might be familiar with the fact that we released uh, a new version that is going to be replacing Collector Classic, and it's coming with a whole bunch of new enhancements to it, and we released and we reached parity with it. In the near term, big enhancements that have been requested are things like snapping and bulk attribute update. And in the future, long term or mid term, we'll be introducing, introducing smart form capabilities like you see with Survey123, but in Collector, so that we have a really simple data capture workflow. And in Survey123, we have capabilities for creating PDF reports out of your features, having web maps and mobile map packages in Survey123. And for those of you who use ArcGIS Enterprise, we'll be having the Survey123 website as a capability available for our on-premises deployments. Two more with Tracker. Tracker, we saw this one, the big update that's coming is the ability for you to use ArcGIS Online for Tracker. This is gonna be released in December, so next month, and will allow you to use either iOS or Android applications to do exactly what we just saw all through our software as a service platform, ArcGIS Online. And with Operations Dashboard, while not a mobile application, as you saw today, it's absolutely critical for, uh, for field operations workflows, being able to monitor everything uh, and know where your workers are and see the progress of work in real time. And in the future, we'll be rebuilding this dashboard on the 4.x JavaScript API, which will come with all the standard components that you're familiar with, but also enormous performance improvements. We'll be, with that, you'll have uh, added support for arcade expressions, as well as being able to visualize web scenes and dashboards, so having 3D dashboards. And there'll be a beta coming soon for that. And so with that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Jeff, who's gonna transition us into a question and answer session where we'll be able to talk uh, and ask questions to either Adam, Nina, or myself. Thanks, Matt. So, Let's change tack now to a virtual Q&A for the rest of the scheduled hour. Uh, there have been a few questions asked by attendees, um, but we still probably have some time. So if you have a question, uh, there's a great opportunity to enter that question into the questions window kind of dialog box on the GoToWebinar. Uh, we'll get started with a couple of questions that have already been submitted and then come back to the ones that are entered in the meantime. So let's start with a couple of questions to Adam and Nina. Um, Adam and Nina, uh, there's a question that came in about uh, getting started. It's clear that you have been 
uh, using these apps for a while. If somebody was just getting started with the with this framework and apps, uh, would you have some guidance on a on a starting point, maybe where you got started, or you'd recommend others get started? Adam and Nina. Sure, Jess. So for us, we initially started with our corporate GIS group. So this could be a good resource if your company is structured the same way. Outside of that being a resource, we were able to utilize many different training options on the Esri website, as well as on YouTube, actually. So we were able to teach ourselves many of the things that you have seen us build out today. Okay. Um, did you start with Collector or Survey123, or it, was there a particular app that sort of got you kick-started? Yes, Survey123 kick-started the work that we are doing today. Uh, we found it very easy to use, and also it's all based off of an Excel spreadsheet. So many of us are familiar with Excel, so it's really a, a matter of teaching yourself what, uh, you know, what the correct sequencing is, what questions you want to put in the survey, and then entering all of that into an Excel format. So we found that to be the easiest option for us. And of course, also, when we collect the information, it automatically populates to a web map. So we did not have to even make a, a map, let's say, in Pro beforehand. So that was really convenient for us. Cool. Um, some questions are coming thick and fast for you now. So. Uh, let, let's skip on to, um, you spoke to the business advantage uh, advantages and you, you mentioned several. Was there kind of a top of the list for you? What, what has been your principal advantage by implementing uh, these apps to, to provide for the workflows? Is it efficiency? Is it, what, what is it for you that's, that's really top of your list? Sure, for us, it's definitely maximizing efficiency. By utilizing this series of apps, we're able to eliminate the paper side of things. And so there's no longer this need to say scan reports in um, and only look at PDFs. We also get a lot of real-time data. So we're able to um, create trends in operations dashboard and that's really useful for us as well. So both of those things, um, efficiency and real-time data capture were important to us. Cool. I, I'm going to keep them coming because there, there's quite a few here, uh, Nina, if that's okay. Uh, don't think you mentioned the style of device that you're using in the field. Could you comment maybe on what devices you're using? Sure. Uh, we like to use the Samsung Tab S3, and we also have iPhones, uh, should we not have the, the tablets with us. Okay. Um, going to pick up from a couple of the coming in kind of in real time. Um, uh, you've done some of the sampling. Uh, you've done quite a lot on sampling. Have you done anything on uh, mapping in the field? Uh, so I, I presume from con uh, in the way of contouring or mapping linear features, but mapping any of the stuff in the in field environment? Oh, we have not taken that option into our work at this time. Okay. Uh, and back to the samples, there's a question from uh, from Ned about uh, sort of going on to, does the application allow users to conduct Q&A and data validation of water quality, uh, say from the lab samples following your sample collection in the field? So that's actually something we are looking into. There's not a an out of the box solution for Q and A. Uh, we're working with Esri developers to uh, utilize the apps and develop a Q and A piece to to the workflow we currently have. Okay, uh, this might be back to the to the mapping question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Uh, Cliff asked about uh, perhaps. Uh, 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 have you looked at uh, contouring any of the analytes, so copper concentrations or time ranges between your sample wells? Again, no, we have done no contouring in the field with uh, the, the ESRI applications at this time. 
do you do that on desktop or through other other applications? You might not do it in the field, but do you do it anyway on desktop or similar? Yes, so we do use ArcGIS Pro from time to time to create maps, and so we do contouring there. Gotcha. Um, I'm picking up the Adam and Nina ones and keeping you keeping you on a roll here. Uh, do your workflows have to integrate with typical uh, mining other mining packages like uh, Deswick, or, or I'm sure there are many others. So have you done any integration? For the work that we do in the environmental department, we do not have to integrate this with other um, mining applications. That's a, a, essentially a separate department. Uh, we are looking into using the operations dashboard to get real-time data from all of our departments, uh, but this is still a work in progress. Uh, yeah, back to the, I'm sorry, the, they do jump around a little bit, but uh, back to the back to the tablets or phones that you use, um, have those Samsungs worked well for you? Do your field staff um, at the mine prefer tablets or phones? Do they Have they shown a strong preference? Yes, so uh, almost everyone in our department now has a tablet and we all prefer the tablet simply because of the screen size. As many of you know, utilizing your iPhone is simply hard to read on sometimes and see data points and whatnot. So by having the tablets, we're able to have a bigger display and we're getting um, everyone uh, used to them. So even our field technicians, all of them have tablets now or iPhones and they seem to be really enjoying the workflow that way. Additionally, Adam and I have the tablets and we're able to pull up information on the fly to show people say in a meeting or in, in an impromptu situation. So we like that as well. Okay, there was a question asked about the migration of lab data and field data. Um, I, I'm not sure I have an answer to that at the moment. I, I'm not sure you have, Nina. So maybe we'll, uh, there's a couple of questions here that we'll uh, do a bit of research internally um, and answer those in, in a follow-up uh, after, this, after this webinar. Uh, which that allows, um, Let's flip over to a couple for Matt on applications. Uh, Matt, uh, with the Workforce app, can you set up recurring required, uh, required samples or? Um, yeah, uh, so that's a good question. The way that we've seen customers doing things like creating um, repeated workforce assignments is usually through the ArcGIS API for Python. So we've got some really uh, really fairly quick to deploy samples of Python code that'll show you how to create workforce assignments. And what people will do then is use things like task scheduler to run these scripts to create assignments. Uh, and so that's a, a pretty common uh, workflow. There's a question, Matt, about tracker. Um, how about the accuracy of the location on tracker? Can you get that to uh, pretty precise, like uh, inches? Yeah, uh, so with Tracker, of course, the, the accuracy is gonna be dependent completely on the device and what, what type of uh, capabilities the device has. So, you know, traditionally with a phone, you're gonna see somewhere between three to five meters of accuracy, I believe, uh, without having any kind of augmented uh, you know, G GNSS receiver, but if you did add a GNSS receiver, something like uh, an EOS uh, or an Aero Gold or one of those, uh, or a Trimble device, you would be able to get whatever accuracy those bring to you. And so if, if you can get sub-inch with a high, in, high accuracy GNSS receiver, you can bring that accuracy then into, uh, you know, into our mobile apps. So staying on the tracking theme, uh, Alfonso asked a question, um, I think this may be back to our friends from Freeport. Um, have you, Nina, have you done any tracking in the field? Um, uh, maybe you've used Collector or I, uh, of course, when Adam first started out, he, he was clicking on particular names. Have you, are you using any 
uh, tracking any of the tracking capabilities in any of the apps at the moment? And if so, for what sort of purpose? Uh, currently, we do not actively track our staff in the field. I know that um, during a, a demo, Adam was utilizing a tracker. And Adam, I think that was Collector, if I'm, if I'm right. Um, and that was purely just to show in a demonstration that, that we do have the capability to do that. And he was tracking himself. I can chime in a, a little bit too on this one, Jeff. Uh, with, with Tracker, as many as this person is probably referring to, there used to be tracking capabilities in Collector, and it's still in the classic version of Collector. The new version of Collector does not have it in there because we designed this new application to be purely designed around tracking. And the reason why is because oftentimes some people don't need to use all of the collector capabilities, they just need tracking. And as well, collector tracking we saw drained a lot of battery from people's devices. And so we wanted something that was really low battery, really simplistic, could run in the background, uh, which collector wasn't able to do those things. And so you know, the modern or the new way to do that leveraging our apps is going to be to have collector and tracker uh, running simultaneously as opposed to doing that location tracking in Collector. Matt, that gives us a great opportunity for uh, another question from Kathleen about uh, what licenses are required from users to run these various apps. So do you need the, an enterprise license uh, to use some of these apps? And how does that work out for, for people? Uh, yeah, so with uh, with all these mobile applications, you don't necessarily need ArcGIS Enterprise, if that's what you're referring to, with the Enterprise license. Either of them, you can use either ArcGIS Online or ArcGIS Enterprise. And for any of the applications that capture information, such as we saw Quick Capture in Survey123 today, or uh, Collector as well, all of those just require field worker users. Uh, Tracker is a premium application, so there's a, a, a small fee per user to, to add those. Um, and then for the people who create these surveys or who, people who create the maps and dashboards, those are going to have to be, of course, creator licenses. Okay, so I got just two quick questions and then we'll have to sign off. Uh, uh, Tina, uh, do you what GPS units do you use with at Freeport? Are there any particular ones that you favor? Uh, we don't use GPS units for our particular work. The tablets are enough for us. Uh, we don't need completely accurate uh, locations for the field work. Okay. And uh, Matt, last one. Uh, how do I learn more? Where do I? If people want to no, learn learn more about the applications, I know Adam and Tina mentioned online uh, materials. Uh, maybe in the follow up, we can point point folks to those follow up materials in the in the yeah. follow up that we send. Absolutely, just like Adam and Nina said, you know, definitely leverage uh, those training resources that are freely available to anybody with Esri licenses. Uh, that's absolutely uh, an option. And then we'll send it out in any follow-up resources as well. Okay, great. Well, we get we need to get ready to sign off here. So um, if you have more questions, as I'm sure you do, uh, uh, Peter Will, who many of many people will know who's who are on this call, and Matt, who did the presentations today, have offered their emails to pick up anything immediate. As we just mentioned, we will follow up follow up with the Q and A that we did today in the email that we follow that we that follows this um, this webinar with the video recording. I'd like to remind you that there is a LinkedIn site for the mining users group um, where you can find information on that user group, and we always link the videos uh, and material there. And of course, the mining web webinar series uh, is located at an online library at at the Esri site. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to uh, remind people that the generally uh, uh, there is a short survey that pops up right after the webinar ends. Uh, we greatly appreciate your feedback and suggestions 
uh, for future webinars. Thank you again for joining us today for this mining webinar. We hope you found it useful and informative, and we'll send you an email with a link to the recording in the next couple of days. Uh, thank you. Have a great day.